Thanks for joining me back on the channel for part two of the 148 Kitty Hawk F35 build log. If you missed part one, make sure to check that out. When we left part one, I had just wrapped up painting the pilot, figure, and seat. So I was a little worried after part one, given the fact that the pilot didn't even fit within the cockpit. I was worried that if Kitty Hawk couldn't even get this part right, I would be in big trouble when it came to the complex innards of the propulsion system. Needless to say, my worries were more than realized as I ended up in a real dogfight with this thing. I had titled the first episode, The Innards. Well, with the struggles that lay ahead, I think this episode would be appropriately titled, The Real Gut Punch. I could tell right away that the bottom fuselage piece on my kit was a bit warped, and from the initial test fittings, it was taking a lot of pressure to get those to close up with the top part of the fuselage. I wasn't sure if adding the wheel bay inserts would actually help this, or if adding all the intakes, engine, drive shaft, and lift fan components, that things would actually get worse. So I figured I'd just take things one step at a time and try to dry fit everything as individual sub-assemblies and build up from there. It was pretty clear right away that there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to build up the propulsion system as a complete assembly and drop it in like the Kitty Hawk instructions would lead you to believe. While their kit engineering is decent, it's certainly not that good. This is a complex assembly and hey, I give them props for tackling it, but we're not talking about to me equality here. Now the intakes would be the obvious thing that would be seen on the completed model. So I figured it'd be better to install those directly onto the top fuselage piece and then work from there. This would allow me to get a nice join between those and the fuselage. After gluing those in place, I could add the lift auxiliary intake trunk and glue it in place to the top of the fuselage. This allowed me to line the engine and get the right spacing and angles to the intake trunks. It also allowed me to check the fit of the drive shaft to the lift fan intake. That fit specifically was pretty dang bad. One, the drive shaft doesn't even come close to fitting on the lift fan assembly, so I had to sand that interface to fit. Second, since I was building this thing up in sections, it was readily apparent that I was going to have to cut the shaft and add an attachment pin to allow me to build this thing up in sub-assemblies. Hey, no biggie there. I used a piece of evergreen styrene rod to insert into the drive shaft, and I drilled a corresponding hole into the piece that I had attached the intakes to allow me to have a removable insert. Before I attached the lift fan to the top of the fuselage piece, I airbrushed the surrounding areas with Tamiya Gloss White. I then glued the lift fan turbine in place, but left the intake assembly, including the louver section off, so that I could test fit that with the forward and main fuselage sections. I was really hoping that if I installed the wheel bay inserts, that it would actually fix my lower fuselage section warp. But shockingly, no bueno there it was still requiring way too much force to get the upper and lower fuselage sections to mate appropriately. When I had the lift fan intake and louver sections painted, I test fitted everything together. Things were definitely looking better with all the propulsion system components fitting quite nicely, but there was still that upper to lower fuselage joint that was terrible with huge gaps and a lot of force still required to make it a nice joint. To fix that upper and lower fuselage joint, I first tried to grind down some of the high spots on the wheel bay inserts. I used a sharpie to mark those so you can see those areas better. There's a decent amount of excess plastic there to allow you to sand down. Just be careful if you're building this thing with the weapons bay open that you don't sand too much. While this alleviated some of the interferences with the engine intake trunk and the intakes themselves, it didn't really actually help the upper to lower fuselage joint problem. I boiled some water and while holding the lower fuselage section and compressing the sides in one hand, I poured the boiling water onto the middle of the lower fuselage section. As the plastic heated up, I could feel the amount of pressure to bend the lower fuselage sides relax just a little bit. This was a good sign. I dumped out the hot water and allowed the plastic to cool while still keeping pressure on the part. Once cool, it was time for the moment of truth. I shook off the water and test fitted the parts once again. The parts aligned with a near perfect fit and there was no more extreme pressure required to get them to close. 
So I think this will do it for part two of this video build. While I initially took a huge gut punch trying to get these parts all to fit together, by ditching the kit instructions and building this thing up in sub-assemblies, I had a much better result. Make sure to join me next time as I work on finishing the cockpit, permanently installing the propulsion system components, and closing up the fuselage. Thanks again for tuning into Flying S Models, and we'll see you next time.